everybody, welcome back to another edition of Tiger TV. I am your host, Spiker Helms. I'm here at the University of Nebraska with head coach Darren Erstat. Thank you, Darren, for coming yeah, on. I appreciate pleasure. it so much. Guys, uh, if you look back at previous episodes, we have episodes with um, the University of Iowa, Missouri State. Go back, check those out. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media platforms. So, with that said, let's head right into it. So, coach, at what point do you start recruiting a player? Well, it depends. You know, mm -hmm. you know. Unfortunately, it's getting earlier and earlier. I mean, I'm not watching sixth and seventh grade games yet, but uh, you know, it's getting into that when they're freshmen. You start building your database and start building relationships and getting guys on your radar. And very, very special cases, maybe you all will offer somebody at that age. But as you get into your you know, the summer before your sophomore year, you start to get evaluated a little bit harder, and start making unofficial visits, and then it can ramp up as a 10th grader. And, yeah. you know, some are a little bit later, and you'll come as, as juniors and the late bloomers. We always say room for a little bit of that. And, you know, it's just a matter of, of building your database and finding out who's interested in your, in your university and, and getting to know the people. I think that's the biggest thing right now is getting to know uh, the kid, getting to know the family, what they're all about. But we do start that at a very young process. And developing that relationship. No doubt about it, it's what it's all about. So how many times does it take you to see a player on the field before you say, hey, we want you to come on campus, take a look around? How many times does it take? Could be one, could yeah. be 10. Uh -huh. You know, there's, there's guys you see right away, you're like, that skill set plays. Yep. You, the motor plays. You see that. Then there's other guys you watch. You're like, well, they're, we have to see. And then you watch them again, and they grow on you. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I better see that one more time. And then it grows on you again. So you know, it, it really every case is a little bit different. There's not exactly one template you follow with every single kid. Mm -hmm. But the more you can see them, the better. Gotcha. And then, so kind of take you back to your high school days and say, when you, if you were a high school guy right now, how would you approach a crew? We dust off the yearbook. Yeah. Oh, that was a long time ago. No. Uh, you know, the one thing that I see that, that I think is, is very valuable is kids doing their homework. Mm -hmm. When you get the general email, I'm going to tell you the truth. I get rid of those things. That's when they're, when I get 50, 80 of those a day. I mean, it's just, it, it, honestly, it's when those ones that catch your attention, it's like, oh, that kid actually, like, looked us up. That kid actually had made some connection and really did his homework on the school. And not, I'm not just talking baseball. I'm talking uh, something within you know the academic part of it, or or just Husker Nation in general, or you know just it's like wait, it kind of catches your attention. So I would have made it personal. I would have really done my homework and find what schools were really on my list. What what is something? What do they what do they have that I want? What do they have that is something I could see myself spending three, four, five years, whatever it is. And that's what I would have done. And and maybe those schools don't like you. Yeah. But you got to start at the top. Just like when you set goals and you chase your dreams, go for the highest ones, man. Mm -hmm. And then if it doesn't work out, you can always find different things that, to go to. But it, it just for me, it's all about a personal level. Just like we want to get to know them personally, mm -hmm. well, the best way to do it is to reach out personally. So it's just it's developing that one-to-one -one relationship, just trying to get in the door. And I mean, uh, camps, you think camps are... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. You can. I mean, you don't have to necessarily do them. It'd be nice to yeah. do it, but uh, it's not. It's not a, a priority for us. But if if somebody does it, it doesn't hurt. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I always want to do is I want to find out about those kids two, three years before they even come to campus yeah. and find out who they're all about. Get to know them so when they get here, two weeks into it, two months into it, they're like, yeah, that's pretty much what we signed up for. We both know each other. And when you do that, that's when you can have really meaningful relationships because you start building that trust earlier. And that's a perfect segue. So like when you are saying that talent is completely equal across mm -hmm. the board, when you're looking at a player, like what character traits do you look for? And then how do you, how do you find those? Well, you get to know them. You talk yeah. to their, their parents. You you know, you get to know mom and dad. If there's not a mom and dad, you get to know whoever's taking care of them. You find out from their coaches. You talk to area scouts. You get as much information as you can. But for me, it's I want to find that person that's going to do the right thing all the time. Mm -hmm. Are the kids that are going to make mistakes? Of course, they're going to screw up the kids. That's part of the deal. Mm -hmm. But when you can see that they have their teammates' best interests at heart and they're trying to get better every single day, it comes out. I can look in their eyes and you can see that. Yeah. You can see that fire. You can see that desire. But when there's a lot of I, I, I's being talked about, well, I did this, I did that, mm -hmm. I look for the guys that say, we, we did this, we did this, our team. Those kind of guys, little words like that make a big difference in your talks. That's crazy. So just like conversation, like everyone looks good, but then it's like those little minute details that you're looking for that. Absolutely. That changes. You, you can see what their priorities are in a heartbeat. 
what is the best advice you have ever received as a player? Be yourself. So simple, mm -hmm. but it's the truth. We try and please so many people. We try and please college coaches. We try and please scouts. We try and please everybody. No, please yourself. Be yourself. This whole journey of life from high school to college, you're trying to find out who you are. And if you don't, if you're always trying to please other people, you're gonna never find out who you really are. And for me, that's the best thing I ever did. And when you do that, you know that you're just gonna go out and, and give it everything you have. And you can, the only thing you have to do at the end of the day is look in the mirror and know you gave it everything you have every single day. And it's not what somebody says to you or good job or bad job. You just have to be able to put your head on your pillow overnight knowing that you emptied the tank. When you do that, that's the best thing you can do. And it frees up so much stuff in your life because you just know you're gonna get, you get the most out of your abilities if it's, you know, JUCO, NAI, Division One, Two, II, or Three, or you don't even, all you do is play high school baseball, that's fine. But you, one thing you don't wanna have at the end of all this is regret. Mm -hmm. And most kids will have regret because, well, I wish I wouldn't have done that, or, or I wish I would have done this. No, just empty the tank, man. Be yourself and have, a, have fun. Coach, it was a pleasure. My pleasure, Spiker. Awesome interview. Um, guys, check out uh, Nebraska, um, their schedule. I will link it all down in the show notes as well. Thanks again, Coach, and we'll catch you later. See ya.